all right youtube welcome back to another g auto repair video and today we're working on this 2011 i believe um chevrolet equinox four cylinder and this is going to be another one of those jacked up jobs um that you kind of accidentally get into <laughs> and the issue with this one uh was a complaint of a clicking clicking clacking tapping ticking type noise coming from the ac vent area uh, when you would turn on the car and when you would move from um, refresh for from outside air into recirculate mode you would uh, hear that clicking noise now it's a common issue um with uh, hvac systems that use these uh servos or actuators i should say um, and the issue is going to be this actuator right here that moves this door this door controls the air that comes from the outside or it recirculates it in the cabin um, so what happens is those little gears break off inside they're plastic they break and then it starts kind of chattering in there so i already have my replacement one right here but as you can tell without giving you a clue all that you have to remove to get to it something so small could be such a problem okay so i picked this up local parts store um availability was not bad no big deal but to get to this booger is the problem because it's buried back in here see and this is the defrost this is the defrost vent uh, or, or piping for the air here and obviously you have your dash covering everything and you can't really get to it you can't get to it from the bottom because if you were to look where is that over here how are you gonna get to it you can't there's no way to get to it from here so with that said obviously you can see the the uh what should i call this i don't know all that you have to tear apart just to get to that part now per the manual and i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to come up with some shortcuts here and i figured i'll bring you guys along um in case you have this issue it's it's not for the faint of heart um but we might make it a little easier on ourselves i'm not sure we're, we're gonna see how this plays out um at the very least you already know what you have to do to get it out you have to technically remove the entire dash so the steering wheel has to come down this whole dash has to come out i already pulled radio modules everything that was here i already pulled it out but um technically by the book this dash has to come out so what i'm trying to do is seeing if i can do it without completely taking it off um that's my goal here to try to save some time um because this was more than what i was expecting i looked at the manual beforehand uh, and the labor guides and everything and um if it's one ac type it's one time if it's another it's a different and i chose the wrong one so <laughs> it happens <laughs> um so as you can see i already loosened this little there's three um quarter inch uh screws that look just like this they're not really big so what i'm using is a quarter inch socket and this flex head quarter inch drive ratchet and uh <clears throat> i'm kind of getting the angle you may be able to do it without this i'm not sure i got this so i'm going to use it to facilitate my life so i can just work in these cramped areas but let me uh, explain what i did before i get too ahead of myself um obviously i removed all that is necessary to lift the uh dash out which is lifted i already pulled it out somewhat it just kind of hung up by here in the center console i'm trying to get away from not having to remove this because again by the book you have to remove the seats and remove this and uh, i wasn't really expecting that so it kind of caught me off guard so i'm trying to work with what i got here so you're gonna have this uh, tubing or piping that goes here in this corner just like so and it attaches right there hope you guys can see this 
right there. So they're gonna be held by these little um, seven millimeter, I believe, seven millimeter screws. And they're all just about the, the same screw. So that's, that's a good thing that um, technically every screw that you pull out can really technically go anywhere because there are just about 95, 98 percent of them are all identical for the exception of a very select few so um that's not much of a problem so what i did is after i lifted this up out of the way i pulled this out like so and of course it comes out a little harder it's just i've already taken it off and then i lifted up this out of its housing there this is where it seats right here so i just lifted it just to get it out of the way so I can work here see now I can stick my hand here because before it was way over here just like that see you're, you're very limited you, you can't even stick your hand all the way back in there so once I lifted this okay and kind of pushed it out of the way kind of like so now I can reach all the way back there because I, can, I can't get to that last screw. I already got to it. I already pulled it out. Here it is. Using that method I, I showed you earlier. So now I just got to get the other two out. Swap this. Reconnect it. Here's the connector right here. I already took it off. And technically I'm back to go back in. Now we got it off. The, da uh, the dash partially off. It's not completely off. But it's to a point where I can work at least. Now the question is, will I be able to stick it back in without any issues? That's the million dollar question. That's uh, what we're gonna find out, okay? So in the meantime, like I said, you're gonna have to get all these little screws out here. You gotta, you're gonna have to get to this point. And it's not 100% easy and it's not 100% hard. It's kind of, you're gonna need some skills and, and, and good memory to put this back. So this is not a really step-by-step -step how to. This is just to get you the general idea of what you have to do to get there. So give me a few minutes, let me swap that out. Um, it's just too cramped in there for me to do it with a camera. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, like I said, I pretty much explained the technique using the ratchet, the swivel head uh, ratchet, a quarter inch socket, and just kind of working the screws loose. Just like so, see? Just like that. You may have to hold it with the other hand. Again, I'm, I have the camera on the other hand, so I need both hands to work a little faster and more comfortably. So give me a little bit and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I already installed the new part. Um, I did pretty quick work with this uh, setup. I uh, told you guys about earlier I was able to reach in there with no problem put take everything off put everything back on so that part was a cinch now comes the challenge of putting Humpty Dumpty back together again so that's uh, <laughs> that's gonna be the the challenge there so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting things back together um, in reverse order obviously now I gotta stick this in here secure it slide the the um, the dash back in place make sure everything lines up as it should and put all the screws back in place and start putting everything back together so let me go ahead and uh, do that and uh, I'll give you guys a, an update here shortly all right peeps I got another update here um the dash is back in um i think uh, this little shortcut here is going to work just fine um one thing i do want to mention is that you're going to have to do a little bit of work to get it back in there um there's two yellow plastic um what do you call those things that uh, kind of go into the holes they're like little studs plastic studs that that like something similar to this but but round um that are that go up against a firewall um so you got to be careful because when you pull this out and you move this around it's gonna everything's gonna come out of alignment so you got to make sure that there should be one about right here and one about right here 
you want to make sure that the uh, defrost vents are on this side when everything is going back in and another thing is you also have to line it up with the housing down here now what happened to me was I put everything back together started putting all the screws everything seemed to align perfectly but something kind of was nagging when the holes for the the tubing of the defrost weren't quite lined up perfectly they were off by maybe a quarter of an inch or so um, I didn't think much of it I just kind of wiggled the, the, the things in there and started tightening things until I looked down in here in this hole um, I think there's an optional uh, speaker that on some models it sits here I'm not quite sure um, but when I looked in here I noticed, and I don't know if this is going to give it justice because it's dark in there, but right there at the base, it was not lined up like it should. So then I was going to lose some air through that vent there. And that's why all the holes weren't lining up because it was just shifted just slightly. So I had to take everything back out, separate the dash just enough to where I can wiggle this and kind of wiggle it and, and, and work as best as I could to try to get it to pop in place until it finally went in there it did go it took a little bit of effort but it did go in there so um, it's not a major thing but just one one tip for you guys if, if you're doing this um, make sure that the base of this tubing is perfectly in the hole where it's supposed to go if not you're gonna have some air loss and then it's gonna be blowing air all up in the dash and you may get a complaint about that i'm not something i don't want to deal with down the road it's easier to deal with it now than it is down the road when the customer realizes that something's not quite right so i had to take all the little screws back out and kind of pop the pop the dash back out a little bit to get enough wiggle room so i can wiggle this around and get it to where it needs to go but so far i've been able to get away without removing the center console which is one of the steps, the seats and a center console, is one of the steps per, per Chevy that you have to do to get this dash out, just to get that part, that part that's in there. So I was able to do it without removing this. So that's that's time saver and I didn't have to drop the, the steering wheel either. So some time saving uh, techniques. Again, this is the first one I do. So um, I, I, if you do this all the time then yeah you can save some serious time and you'll get really good at it but this is the first time so um, I'm still behind uh, uh, because of time but not that bad I didn't have to tear apart all of this stuff so I just want to give that quick update and uh, when I start putting everything back together I'll, I'll give more updates and, and tips as I run into them all right guys welcome back and uh, as you can see here the dash is back in place everything seems to be in order and uh, the noise went away um, before when you used to change from fresh air to recirculate here it would make that that noise that clicking tapping noise back here but as you can see it has gone away Pretty much the clicking noise is this like I mentioned earlier and I've gone ahead and let me turn off the, the car pretty much what happens and I don't know how good this is gonna come out on the camera but right here these little tooth there's a there's a tooth missing there I don't know how good that's gonna show I don't think it's gonna show too well but um, there's a tooth that's that's broken off there and that's what causes that that clicking noise it, it skips the tooth and it starts 
trying to catch the other tooth and it can't quite make it so it starts making a, 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 a ticking clacking noise but over all in all that's what causes that 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 noise so I hope this video was helpful like I said most of the screws are all identical anyway so I still got to put this back in here but this job is pretty much done thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video it was helpful and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video ciao